All right, let's do this. Welcome, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Um, it's early in the morning uh, when I'm recording this. It's not even six o'clock, so hopefully uh, I can do this. But there are some people that are out of uh, school today, so you know, through no fault of their own, they can't help it. Uh, and I just want to make a, a video for them and for you. So it's like you're not missing anything. You can watch this whenever you're ready because we we have to tackle some really heavy material. I'm, I'm debating still, should this be one or two lessons? Because what I want to talk about is um, uh, exposition. That's not too bad. That might take like two minutes to explain. But then conflict. Conflict's a tough one. So I don't want this to be a 20 minute lesson, but I think it might be just because it's such a big topic, which is why maybe halfway through I will split this up so you don't have to watch all 20 minutes or you, know, you can stop halfway through, work a little on the Google form, whatever. And of course, I'm always around. Ask me questions. If you're watching this at home, you know, send me an email. I will get back to you pretty quickly. But like I said, two things I want to talk about. Exposition, conflict. Exposition has like one part. Conflict has like six parts. So exposition. Here we go. There's the definition. <clears throat> Important stuff that happens before the story began, before we met the characters. And so since we are watching or we're reading the care and feeding of your baby killer unicorn, I'm going to use that as an example. But I'm not going to say the really, really important stuff. I'm going to ask you to figure out that. So if you've been following along as we've been reading every day, there's been a major event that happened before we met the characters. But in any, you know, like I said, important stuff. Like we know that when our main character, like she was born. Okay. Like we weren't there for her birth. So that's technically exposition. Okay. But um, maybe something more significant is whenever Eve's and when met like that, that's pretty big. I think she tells us it was uh, at six years old. They, they became neighbors and stuff like that. So that's pretty important. And the reason that an author or, you know, a playwright or somebody writing a movie script, the reason we have exposition is because you want the story to feel more real. You don't want it to feel like those characters were created just for the page or just for the movie. You want them to have a life before we met them, before the audience met them. So there were uh, at least two major events in care and feeding of a baby unicorn that, and I'll give you a hint here that happened last fall that is really impacting our story. Now without that event or those two events last fall, we wouldn't really have a story. So please like, let me know on the Google form, show me that you've been paying attention Show me that you know what exposition is by letting me know what are those two major events that happened before we ever met when or Eves last fall. That's exposition. Not so bad. Conflict. You know, the definition of conflict is not that bad. Protagonist. If you can figure out the protagonist, main character of the story, good person, person we're rooting for, person we hope succeeds in whatever goal they have in, in life or in the story. And then if you can figure out what the antagonist is or who the antagonist is, boom, you got your conflict. Now, that's not always so easy. Protagonist, yeah, not that bad. But antagonist can be difficult and it can change can develop throughout the story and there can be more than one. I was getting some kind of message on my screen. So let's just take baby killer unicorn for example. And like I said, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six, 
six different types of conflict. Some people you talk to, they'll say seven, and we'll, we'll get into that in a minute, but I want to just teach six. I think six exist. I, I think there's another one that um, can fit into another one. I'll, I'll talk about that when we get there. So here's this. Probably the easiest to identify, but it, maybe not that common. It's person versus person. Person versus person. Um, I think in every ca- uh, every class, we talked about Toy Story. I think most people are familiar with that. Uh, there are four movies that makes it difficult because there are different conflicts throughout. But when you go back to that very first Toy Story released, I think in 1995, the first like half hour, it's Buzz versus Woody. You know, Buzz lands on the bed, disrupts Woody's life. Woody wants to be Andy's favorite toy. So there are elements of person versus person in baby killer unicorn now i would argue in my opinion as i read this um this is not the one that drives it though this is not the main conflict but at times you do have win versus eves um she's definitely not exactly happy with him because um he was like kissing summer we might get into this one person versus self, which is pretty big with win, but um, there, there are little elements of that. And, and she doesn't really like summer, like summer gets on her nerves. It's not the major conflict, but we do have a little bit of person versus person. Um, I think in most of the Marvel movies, you know, I hope you're a Marvel fan. Cause I use them quite a bit just because they've been so popular over the last decade or so. I'll use a very big word. They've been ubiquitous, ubiquitous. Like they're everywhere. You can't get you can't get away from them. The Marvel movies are are literally everywhere. Every time you, that's my family upstairs. I don't know if you can hear, but I think they are running our trash compactor, which is which is great. But they're trying they're trying to get ready for school. I woke up early and I got ready for school. So, um, person versus person. That's the most obvious one. You usually have like a bad guy. In quotes, you know, you have a bad person. That one's not that bad. Uh, let's get into this one now. This is this is one of the toughest to identify. It actually might be the most rare, though. Let me do a little screen share here. Look at this. Pop this up. No, no. Come on. Work with me here. Boom. So I will leave this link in. Um, I could leave it in the description, but I'll put it in uh, Google Classroom. Okay. But here, this page says that there are seven and really quickly and they're using slightly different terminology than i am right they're saying character versus i'm using person versus i've always used person versus but i like character also let's drop down to character versus society right here and uh you know they use some pretty big words here particularly prevalent in fiction these days prevalent means um you will find it a lot almost like ubiquitous prevalent just means it's it's around quite a bit so these are the type of uh right there highlighted those are the type of things that might make up a society an oppressive government if something is oppressive it pushes down on you like sometimes you'll hear like oppressive heat in the summer if it's really hot and the weather is making you feel really tired like you don't want to do anything like you might not even want to eat anything it's just so hot oppressive it can it can push you down a government can do the same thing if you think about um the hunger games i think most people know the hunger games you know, that government, the capital, was pitting like teenagers against each other. So in the Hunger Games, you definitely had character versus character or person versus person. Like they were trying to kill each other. But I think the overall driving conflict was the society. It was the government that was forcing these things to happen, forcing a lot of rules on you. Speaking of rules, You can see the next one. It says teenagers as seen, I'm sorry, adults 
as seen from a teenager's perspective. Man, we haven't even talked about point of view with perspective yet, but we will. Um, so you might feel this yourself, you know, teachers pushing you down, you know, lots of rules, um, parents, you know, lots of rules. So sometimes teenagers can feel like the entire society is, is geared against them. Um, let's say that you really want to, what, what, what can't you do right now? Well, can't stay out late. Maybe hopefully you can't. Um, but let's say what, what laws are against you? Well, maybe you want to drink alcohol. I hope you don't. It's bad for you, but um, there's my finger. It's bad for you. I'm wagging my finger at you. Don't drink alcohol. But society says, no, you can't. Not until you're 21. You may be like, oh, I really want to drink alcohol. It's bad for you. Maybe you really want to vote. Yeah. You really want to vote. Like you're, you're just itching to vote. Like, oh, I want a voice in my government. Yep. It's oppressive. They are keeping you down. You can't vote until you're 18. So person versus society, though, it can be extremely let me make this a little bigger it can be extremely um oppressive i want to highlight this right here systematic corruption so at one time in this country there were actual laws you know that if you were black you couldn't attend a certain school racism is definitely character versus society this movie recently came out right here the hate you give if you've ever seen that movie or you or if you've read that book if you haven't i encourage you to but there is a whole lot of um right at the beginning of the story there's definitely a misunderstanding between the uh the driver of a car and a police officer and um you know a young a young man gets shot uh, and it's dark and he's reaching into um the the side of his door some argue that you know if he was white he wouldn't have been shot so i, I highly recommend this book if you haven't read it. i've been recommending this book for about two or three years before the whole virus thing i remember i think it might have been 2019 or 18 um great stuff here in this but it's definitely character versus society Character versus society right there. Probably the most difficult. Uh, or, or person versus self. That's a really tough one. And that is when the uh, character, the main character, is their own worst enemy. When they are having um, a conflict inside of them. And I think we could say that we have seen that with when. Um, but it's, it's internal, it's inside the person. So it's often much more difficult to spot, much more difficult to point out. I think society person versus society that can be very difficult too, because it's like almost everyone against that person. Um, maybe sometimes going back to person versus society, if there's like a, a culture of bullying, you know, for whatever reason, um, Sometimes people in school will just get picked on by everyone. You know, they're an easy target. So that might be considered person versus society if everyone is against this person. So with when she is definitely conflicted. Remember, there's that whole part about um, there are a couple lines. And for the Google form to really prove this, you might want to find those lines in the in the story because it would be really effective for your answer if you can find those quotes if you can find those lines when she says i need to get rid of this evil these evil thoughts of the unicorn from my soul or something like that she says that like it's her fault that the unicorns are able to contact her so anytime it's like the character's own fault you got person versus self person versus self um again in the marvel movies uh end game right is it end game yeah. tony stark has a whole lot of person versus self like he feels guilty um no actually age of ultron i think 
because you know he was part of developing Ultron. He did it for good. He wanted to protect the planet um, from invasion from outside forces. But then Ultron turned on him and became, you know, definitely a conflict there. Tony Stark versus Ultron or whatever. But then you have the whole person versus self because Tony Stark is blaming himself for creating Ultron. So person versus self can be very, very effective. I mean, we all have that, right? In our own life, we all like doubt ourselves. It's like, oh man, I made my life more difficult than I had to. So person versus self is definitely, definitely a tough one to identify and a tough one to, um, as you're reading, a lot of times it just, you don't realize it's there. Authors love to use it though. Authors love to use it. Let's take a look at this. Where's, let's go back to the top here person versus self what do they use here and oh okay so i just used hunger games right i used hunger games as person versus society i mean those are three different books right well the hunger games is the first one but if it's a novel if it's a book of like 200 300 pages you're going to have a lot of different conflicts so the one they use here for hunger games is person versus self now of course um Katniss will be you know there's the, right at the beginning of the story where her I'm not sure if there's a conflict though like she's she seems like she's ready to do it to do it but when her sister's name is pulled instead you know she is the one who volunteers so for for a brief minute there might have been oh no like I don't want to do this should I do this but I mean she's right there for her sister so um, I think this might be a key line right here. So in order to win the Hunger Games, of course, you have to like pretty much kill everybody. And then Katniss is going to be torn between, you know, her own life and the guilt of killing pretty much innocent people. You know, the, the only reason that they're there for the most part, you know, maybe the people from... Um, what is it? Um, District one and two. They seem like they really want to be there and to kill. But most of them. Oh, what's the little girl's name? Is it Prin? What's it, the girl from the, the with the bread? Don't want to spoil it. And I'm, I can't quite remember. But I mean, obviously, she doesn't want to kill her. You know, so she's definitely torn over um, saving her own life or, you know, she's going to she's going to have to kill some people. OK, these next I know this is getting long. It's about 20 minutes. Um a little bit longer than I'd like, but these last three, not that bad. Person versus technology. We might, we might have that maybe every day. Hey, that we experienced that um, on the first day of school. You all know what technology is, I'm sure. Um, but trying to get into, would we say the lockers were technology? In a way, in a way, the combination. I mean, it's older technology. Mm. But how about the uh, so many people had trouble getting into their Google suite, the Google Mail, the Gmail, the Google Classroom. We couldn't do anything about it. It's like, what? We were powerless. That That's definitely person versus technology. Um, if you've ever seen the Terminator movies, those are amazing. That's when AI, artificial intelligence, starts like going after people. So that AI is definitely technology person versus technology so that one's pretty pretty um pretty basic person versus nature i like what this um website does let's bring this up i'm not sure if you've ever seen these let's see person versus self um let's we could talk about person versus fate in a minute what are we on? oh person versus technology too with with uh frankenstein so this is dr frankenstein so we're back on um technology for a second person versus technology so he creates this monster but then this monster turns on the person who created him yeah it's a it's a really good and we kind of see this with cloning today a lot of people don't like the idea of cloning a lot of people do but that might be person versus technology what if like if you've ever watched the um, star wars series with uh the clone wars you know those clones there 
they eventually uh well it depends on who you are but to, to some people they are the bad guys the bad people all right i'm all over the place what were we on here person versus nature there there you go person versus nature right here um if you ever seen jaws it's like the shark attacks people the only the only way we can call the only thing we can call that shark is nature it's an it's a natural thing day after tomorrow perfect storm not sure if you've ever seen those things but literally i think it's three characters are on a boat and it's like the worst storm ever kind of based on truth true facts there um i think it took place in um took place in massachusetts all right and then so if something is natural it's of this earth supernatural that would be not of this earth so like if you take something like ultron some people may say technology you know because tony stark built it but because we don't quite have that technology yet i mean it could be supernatural but also very common things with supernatural would be um ghosts you know witches aliens maybe would fall into that category aliens because if something is natural it's of this earth if it's supernatural it's not of this earth it's not nature if you see supernatural it kind of has nature in it so i think that's about it i mean i there is this website says character versus fate that's a whole nother topic that I really don't want to get into. Um, really briefly, you, you, you won't be quizzed on this in this class, but if your high school teacher ever introduces fate, it's basically when you were born, it's like your destiny. So if I believed totally in fate, it would be like, oh, from birth, I was meant to be a teacher it kind of it, the, some people believe in faith some people don't um some people believe in free will if you have free will it's the opposite of fate it's like you have choices in your life um they were not predetermined if you believe in fate you believe that your life has been predetermined like whatever happens to you is supposed to happen so that's a whole nother thing that I really don't want to get into, but I think most of the time character versus fate can either fit into supernatural or, or, or nature. So hope this was helpful. This was over 20 minutes long. I don't usually like doing these, but of course, like I said, um, or at least this long, like I said earlier, maybe you stopped this and took a break for a second, did some questions or saved it till the next day, but Ooh, 23 minutes let's get out of here hope that was helpful if there are any questions of course come see me if you're in class or send me an email if you're at home all right